Hey guys, Super Horror Bro Mike here, and in today's video, we take a look at perhaps the most horrifying and mysterious character from the story of Poppy Playtime thus far, Experiment 1006, aka the Prototype. But what is this creature? Who is it? And what is its purpose and intentions? Well, sit back, relax, and let's take a closer look with a theory that not only aims to answer these questions, but also speculate on how this sinister prototype and Poppy Playtime herself are hideously connected. First, let's quickly summarise what we know about Experiment 1006. We can make the connection between the naming of this entity and its appearance in the game when referring to two audio logs left by a head scientist who worked at Playtime Co. Log code 08502. In relation, experiment 1006, the prototype. Notice how, while the scientist speaks about the prototype, the image of a mechanical claw is displayed on screen. This claw is an exact match for the one shown here, during the grisly aftermath of Mommy Longleg's demise, reaching out from beneath an open shutter to claim her torso. At first glance, this clawed hand, referred to in the game as simply the claw, seems purely mechanical. Take a closer look, however, and we can see what looks suspiciously like human bones incorporated into its arm. So, much like the other living toys, it appears the prototype is of human origin. However, due to its naming, Prototype, it suggests this experiment predated the others, or at least most of them. Other facts we learn about this early experiment from the scientist research logs is that it was eager to commit homicidal acts of violence. It could not be suppressed like many of the other experiments. And it was highly intelligent and resourceful almost escaping several times before eventually managing to do so and run rampant through the Playtime Labs, killing on sight and closing the book on Playtime Co's storied history as the world's leading toy manufacturer. We must forge onwards in the name of science, whether those who are beneath us understand it or not. End of- Events were then covered up, until the return of a worker invited back to investigate a decade later. Now let's rewind a little. How did a seemingly innocuous toy company move from creating groundbreaking technological toy marvels to killer machine experiments with human bodies at their core? Well, it all started with company founder Elliot Ludwig, the mastermind behind many of Playtime Co's early hits, such as Poppy herself. Playtime Co is the product of a great man by the name of Elliot Ludwig, divorced but a family man at heart. His sights were always set on bringing amazing toys to amazing children around the globe. Ludwig spent countless hours in the factory, working overtime relentlessly in an attempt to continuously innovate and surprise. In the 1960s, an unfortunate family death had pushed Ludwig down to his lowest. But with so much ambition, he rose back up and continued to fulfill his vision for the Playtime Co. toy factory. Elliot suffered a tragic loss. We do not know who this family member was, but my personal thoughts lean toward it being his young daughter. Such a loss would certainly be unexpected after all. After suffering this loss, Elliot returned to work as his company, but this time with new goals in mind. He turned to the scientists in his research and development department and tasked them with resurrecting the dead. Using a combination of an in-house developed gel and the regenerative abilities of a poppy flower. These experiments were first conducted on rats, fed mysterious food simply referred to as portions before being killed and submerged in the gel and poppy mixture. With the mysterious nutrients inside their system, and given time to rest in this mixture, an electric shock was administered a few weeks later, intended to bring these rats back from the dead. Unfortunately, rat research proved inconclusive, and this note found in Elliot's office hints he decided to set his sights on bigger test subjects, perhaps of the human variety. What if it was a way to incorporate his late child's remains into the experiments 
and bring her back. Not in a human form of course, but rather her soul within a new vessel. And what better vessel than the doll based on his own daughter, Poppy Playtime. Ludwig's daughter was indeed a larger specimen, and therefore pairing her remains with a Poppy doll she had been very closely bonded with in life, and then submerging it in the gel mixture actually worked. But not quite as intended. We have seen plenty of evidence that the souls trapped within these toys lean toward dark and violent tendencies, confused as to their new form, and seemingly with very little recollection of who they were when human their minds naturally gravitating towards anger and hate. To prevent losing his daughter to this darkness, and in order to find a more suitable vessel for her soul, Elliot sealed Poppy away in a stasis-like case, a place where she was unable to break free and remained in a form of hibernation. Elliot was now desperate to create a more human body for his lost daughter, and discover a way to rid her of these violent tendencies and so work on a prototype experiment began. The goals for experiment 1006, the prototype, were simple. To find a way to fuse the human skeletal structure to that of a robot that could mimic a living human, not simply a toy or doll. We see this when observing its hand and arm. Outside of the clawed fingers, these look very human in design. The arm bone an exact fit in fact. Elliot didn't want his daughter forever trapped inside a doll. Unfortunately it seems he did not live to see his research realised, a fateful event hinted at during his biographical video foreshadows his untimely demise. How did he manage to stay determined even after suffering such a tragic loss? It all began in the fateful year of 19... The exact circumstances of Elliot Ludwig's death are unknown. In his wake, Ludwig's scientists were left to pick up the pieces and company management to carry the mantle forward. And so they did, but not in a way their founder would have wanted. Elliot Ludwig was a kind man. While he desperately wanted to bring his daughter back, he didn't wish to do so at the expense of other human life, using animal test subjects or those already dead in his work. New management had other ideas. What if they could take Elliot's research into creating living toys using human cadavers to literally make living toys to sell to the world? The next breakthrough in creating the kind of advanced toy technology Playtime Co. had always been famed for. But to do this they would need to find a way to remove the violent tendencies of these experiments. And so an underground lab was built and dedicated to this work. Before his death, Elliot volunteered himself to become part of furthering the research to restore his daughter to human form. In doing so, he signed his body over to become part of Experiment 1006. The skeletal structure we see inside this entity is none other than Elliot Ludwig himself. But this perversion of his work at the hands of the new corrupt management and ruthless scientists who threw human life to the wayside in their pursuit of science accelerated the darkness within Ludwig's rebirthed form, turning him into a killing machine. One that wished to rebuild himself using the bodies of suitable victims. After all, it seems this prototype was only partially built. The scientists knew at this point they needed to find a way to extinguish the natural darkness prevalent in their experiments, and so the Orphan Adoption Initiative was born, a clandestine way of obtaining a near limitless supply of human test subjects. This went on for a while. For example, the rat in Elliot's note is labelled Experiment 814, while the prototype was Experiment 1006 and Huggy Wuggy was Experiment 1170. So these experiments continued for many years and evolved greatly during this time. With each experiment valuable lessons were learned and the scientists developed ways to curb hostility and danger levels. The prototype seems to possess an unprecedented level of intelligence beyond that of all other test subjects, as well as an alarming willingness to commit violence. Further suppression treatments will need to be enacted to ensure that no other experiments develop these qualities. Experiment 1170, Huggy Wuggy, 
remains the optimal outcome due to his sufficient intelligence paired with maximum obedience. End of log. The orphans were used to suppress the darkness within the living toy creations such as Mommy Longlegs, herself born from adult victim Marie Payne. Later, child test subjects were also used to create living toys themselves. They were in fact the perfect candidates. The process of turning orphans into toys seems to have been as follows. First, a child was given a toy to bond with during testing, and as they experienced fear and hardship, their soul would tether itself to this object. The more a child bonded with their given toy, the more easily they could be resurrected inside it after death. As these children were more pure and innocent than their adult counterparts, they made for the perfect subjects. Once becoming toys, their darkness was far easier to control and extinguish. For a detailed explanation of this process, check out my Poppy Playtime Chapter 2 Story Explained video. I'll leave a link at the end of this one. Of course, these scientists playing God came to a sticky end. Eventually, Ludwig's prototype found a way to escape confinement. After all, he was a master of technological innovation. Engineering and escape came naturally to him, even in death. From here, the prototype rebuilt itself using other toy and machine parts, and with the aid of his fellow experiments, which he seemingly managed to coordinate and influence, went on a killing spree around the Playco factory. Final log in relation. Experiment 1006, the prototype. Coordination and cooperation is evidently within his skill set, as well as the skill set of all other experiments of his type. Though still missing, today's events are no doubt in relation to him. With the children now gone, the adult test subjects such as Huggy Wuggy and Mommy Longlegs no longer had a proverbial band-aid placed over their desire to kill, and murdered the remaining staff members and defenseless toys trapped inside the facility. Explaining the carnage we see on display during our journey. Their darkness took hold. Meanwhile, the prototype continues to feed and grow larger and more deadly by the day. Further evidence of the prototype directly influencing other toys comes when we analyse the game over screens received upon death. Quotations flash up on screen and are cryptic in nature. One in particular is very interesting. It states, the prototype has saved us. Isn't he wonderful? It seems we receive these messages before being resurrected ourselves, and they may well originate from the hive mind of collective victims now assimilated into the body of Experiment 1006 itself. Souls now subservient and under the prototype's control. At the beginning of Chapter 2, Poppy acts in a friendly, childlike way. I wanted to thank you for freeing me. I was stuck in there for so long. Thank you. I'd like to pay you back. But after Poppy is removed from isolation in her suspended state inside her case, the darkness naturally associated with all resurrected subjects begins to take hold. This explaining her more sinister demeanor by the chapter's end. Did you kill her? Good. I'll board the train. We need to leave. This darkness will only accelerate as Poppy spends more time outside her case. Although for now she seems content with putting an end to the terrible events that occurred within the toy factory. Do you know how long I've been stuck in that case? Well, too long. I had so much time to think and reflect to figure out exactly what I would do when free. We'll set things right. Terrible things have happened. But I know that whatever I need you to do, you are capable. We will. What if... You'll notice how the sound that occurs when Poppy is disconnected from us at the end of Chapter 2 sounds very similar to the one heard during the end of Elliot Ludwig's biographical tape. Take a listen. What 
so does this sound belong to the prototype. Poppy's father, Elliot Ludwig, who is now drawn to her when he realises she has been freed. Reuniting with his lost loved one could be the one suppressor strong enough to calm the prototype's mind, just as the presence of children did for Mommy Longlegs and Huggy Wuggy. And therefore, could the prototype actually end up saving us, using Elliot's mind to help the protagonist find a way to end this madness once and for all? And will all of this be possible before Poppy herself is lost to the darkness? For answers to those questions, we'll just have to wait and see. Either way, if this theory is correct, the dark connection between Poppy and the prototype has been established. Father and daughter now reunited in their new robotic forms. And with that, we come to the end of this theory video for Poppy Playtime Chapter 2. This is of course just a theory, and my own speculation as to where I believe the story of the game may be headed in chapters to come, using the little evidence currently on hand. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments below, leave a like if you enjoyed this video, and of course subscribe for more horror related content. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next video.